You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hello, fellow human. Welcome back to the Higher Ideas Podcast. So today I want to take a little break from psychedelics to talk about something that I've sort of been indirectly touching on uh, in those episodes, in those recent psychedelic episodes. And that is religion. But before we get to that, we have to do today's Dissecting Ego. So here we go. So, which piece of ego are we looking at today? Well, those of you who may have been listening to the previous uh, segments on ego may have come to see a pattern so far that working on ego basically boils down to self-empowerment. Because we surrender so much of ourselves, so much of our own decisions and uh, reflexes and actions, we surrender them to the mechanism of ego without a thought. And working on ego is about uh, waking up, in a sense, is about realizing how much power we give to this brainless function and trying to pull it back. And the only way you pull it back is by first realizing you've given it up. But that is the dynamic of personal power. See, a person can kidnap you. They can tie you up. They can kill you. That's ways that people can physically take power from you. But personal power is more internal. It's more about a sense of being in control of oneself, a sense of knowing yourself, a sense of owning yourself. And that's the kind of power that uh, we give away all the time without realizing it. And we do it without even having to, and most of the time, we become weaker for it. So let's explore one of these cases, one of these situations that is everywhere in society and unavoidable, and how it boils down to ego. Majority equals right. Minority equals probably wrong, uh, I don't know, debatable, a weak position, um, ah, forget about it. Let's go with the majority, right? Uh, this is a dynamic that is so prevalent in our society, and that's with good reason. It's because we mostly live in democratic systems, which go by the tenets that the group, the, the mass of opinion, is what we follow. And the other, well, you know what, not enough people, you're not strong enough, so forget you. But of course, this comes down to ego. This comes down to a sense that the bigger group is stronger. Me big, you small. Me strong, crush you. Brr! Right? This is like a really uh, primitive way of looking at things. And how many times in history has the opposite been proven correct? that the minority opinion was actually the uh, historically right position. Um, I mean, look at all of the revolutions that had to happen throughout history. Women's liberation, uh, black people are people too. I mean, a, l- a lot of these concepts were resisted. The earth was flat for the longest time. People didn't want to believe it was round. The earth used to be the center of the universe, And that took a whole lot of people dying and fighting against this concept, being burned as heretics and whatnot, before people finally clued in that there was something to this idea. But this goes to show the sort of resisting effect of of this ego-like notion that you're not right unless you've got a lot of people behind you. But the truth is, uh, what that really means is you don't get to change society unless you've got popular opinion behind you. And it has nothing to do with whether your idea is correct or worthy or fair. It really is only about societal power. The mass opinion holds a lot of societal power in a society where the mass opinion decides. That's only natural. But the sentiment goes deeper than that. Um, The reason we fall so easily into this trap of of accepting that the group represents right is because, again, ego is trying to look out for our survival. 
We are social animals. We have evolved to live in groups for a long, long time now. Humans have been living in groups, whether it be a group of five or a group of five million. Uh, by and large, out there, humans don't live completely on their own. And so, ego, which is in charge of our survival, has a mechanism built into it that makes us want to join a group. And of course, when you try to join a group together, you have to come up with a sort of understanding between all of those people. So we've got this inbuilt feeling. Let's try and fit into the group. Let's try and uh, accept the group ways. Not only that, but it comes loaded with the fear of death, as ego often does, because if you're on your own in the wild, you're basically as good as dead, unless you're some kind of badass. So again, there is this deathly fear inbuilt to the ego to make you merge into the group. So these are all mechanisms, as I've often discussed about ego, that have a purpose. It's fine. It's fine to want to fit into the group. We do have to live together. We do have to get along. But what I want to highlight here is that, as usual, we throw the baby out with the bathwater in completely um, dropping the value of the individual opinion or the, um, the minority opinion. So many people out there have got a sort of um, fringe view of something or a fringe idea or a fringe way of doing things. I mean, by and large, to live together, we do come to an average way of being. But in the individual, there's all sorts of wacky stuff going on. And when someone has something inside of them that doesn't fit into the norm, we're not taught to embrace it for ourselves. I mean, it doesn't mean everyone else has to embrace it. But I can't remember ever being taught in my life the tenets that it's okay to embrace my own individual beliefs or views or ideas uh, and just run with it. And that's an instance where in so many ways we abandon our personal power. And even though uh, we never really set out to try and erase that notion from people, it's just a subtle effect that happens from being raised in a system where the majority rules. There's just a sort of unstated statement that teaches people at a very young age that the group is right, and if you disagree, you're probably wrong, or you're going to face a lot of opposition. It's going to be very complicated for you. So you might as well just go along with the group, and if you've got something inside of you that disagrees, just shut up about it, right? Uh, of course, I, like I said, this is not outrightly stated, but it's sort of an unspoken effect when you don't expressly let people know and, 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 and teach. I'm talking about kids here, of course. Remind them not to abandon what they are, not to forget that the entire world is not... The average. There is all sorts of other things going on inside the individual that are of value. I mean, this is how we find innovation in life. People that have the balls to have a different idea and not keep it to themselves, but act on it, speak on it, represent it, live it, right? There's a whole lot of personal power that returns to a person when they break free from the idea that you need a majority agreement to validate an idea, or a way of being, or, or anything. So again, this is another maybe a vague slice of ego we're exploring here, but I hope just highlighting this mechanism will uh, send you forward paying attention to this in your own behaviors, and your own thoughts. I mean, think about your life. Think about things that you feel or, or, or think that you don't act on or express or um, just represent, or actually live, because you feel it's not the way we do things. As always, the battle against ego starts with awareness and observation, and questioning yourself in your own ways. So hopefully that helps. And that's today's little slice of dissecting ego. So this dovetails nicely into today's topic, which is, of course, religion. And I know, I know. Danger, right? I am walking into so many ego minefields these days. But yeah, religion 
definitely is one of these inflammatory topics where it seems like anything you say about it will have you attacked by one side or the other. If I'm about to say stuff that is in favor of religion, the anti-religion people will, you know, come after me. And if I say stuff that is anti-religion, the religious people are likely to lash out at me. It's all of this ego reactionary stuff going on, and in fact what's going on is because I'm stepping into a battlefield. There is a war going on between not only one religion and the other religions, but there's a war going on between religions and people that claim to be non-religious or anti-religious. I mean, let's say atheists here. But guess what? doesn't matter whether you say you're a religion or not. If you are a group of beliefs, especially that is engaging in warfare on another group of beliefs, you're a religion. I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that's, that's what a religion is. A religion is a set of beliefs that one lives by, a set of views and uh, sort of stories about reality that one subscribes to. And based on that, based on that set of beliefs, that person will uh, shape their interaction with the world. It always, no matter how you frame it, it will also always feed into morality. It will feed into what you allow yourself to do because of this set of beliefs. And some of these religions, which will remain nameless, go so far as to um, penetrate into... Um, tribal, uncontacted strains of humanity, which really should be left alone, under the guise of helping them, and bring disease, first of all, but also bring technology, shiny magic technology, that they show these tribal people, these uncontacted people, and basically use that as a trick to convince them that we have miracles, and you should follow our religion. And this very quickly destroys the culture they contact, destroys their belief systems, and convinces them to join, all in an effort to collect as many humans as possible, because of this strange concept that we just explored, that if I have more people, I win. If I have more people, I'm right. But what kind of insecurity does that highlight about a religion when it needs, it has a, a burning desire to recruit more than the other team so they can win. That, to me, has always reflected such an insecurity in that belief system that, that it should be just immediately realized that it's got nothing to stand on. If all of your effort is invested in winning by numbers instead of by logic, instead of by uh, actual value of your concepts... Ah, man, that's a huge red flag. That's a huge red flag that, that you should be ashamed of. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not here to cast judgment on any particular group, but come on, man, come on. This is why I've always respected um, Buddhism, for example, which is sort of a very soft religion. It just presents itself. It goes, here I am, I'm Buddhism, here's what I believe, and if you think that makes sense, cool, join in. Oh, you're coming with other beliefs? No biggie, just weave them in, it'll, it'll make sense. That's the right way to do it, if you ask me. That's the best way to run an organized religion. But of course, most of the time, because people have such undisciplined egos, especially in centralized power struggle systems like a hierarchy of a religion, of an organized religion, most of the time a religion, as it grows, will fall into the trap of, no, we have to win, this is a war, there are other beliefs out there, we have to eliminate them. Because we're right, damn it, God is on our side, let's go, let's go, holy war across the world. Ugh, that's such a wrong way to do it. And that's why religion, of course, as a word, has become so polluted, because of those uh, historical bad apples that are still around today, still doing the same old crap. But that's not religion you're angry at. It's not religion itself. That's ego. Like I keep trying to, to highlight, it's ego that has turned those, those groups into such a problem. And there's actually nothing wrong with religion, with, with the pure word religion, which is simply a set of beliefs 
that a person lives by. It doesn't even have to involve supernatural gods and stuff. It's purely a set of beliefs that one believes in so much that they will base their entire life on it. Now, science, I mean atheism, which you could call the religion of science, is a religion. It's a religion. It might hate to be associated to the word religion because it thinks religion means God. But no, it's a religion. It's a group of beliefs that a person um, signs up to that thinks, yep, that makes sense to me. I will adopt that and represent it with a title, atheism. That's our group. And let's make our group bigger and let's beat the other groups. Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Another religion already flushing down the toilet because of this behavior, this insecure, um, aggressive, must wipe out the competition behavior that instantly makes it clear you're not all that confident in what you believe in. So, what am I trying to get at here? Am I trying to say that all religions are useless and we shouldn't have religion? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is this. Why should a religion have a title? Why should a religion have more than one follower to be valid? Now, in my own personal life, I was raised a Catholic. And, you know, uh, I never really bought it. I never felt a lot of connection to the entire view of, of, of that. Um, and even though I was in Catholic schools uh, as I was raised, I, around, I guess, 13 years old, made a declaration where I told my parents, no, I don't believe in this. And I actually had, at the time, kicked back uh, in a reactionary way by going into Wicca, which was the big counter-religious sort of religion at the time. Uh, to be honest, I never really fully bought that myself either. It was just a way to break out of Catholicism. But see, this is because at the time I still had that idea that I need to be part of a group to have a religion. Eventually, I realized the truth, which is I don't need a group. I don't need a title. I don't need a Bible. I don't need a written set of rules. I just need to figure out what the hell I believe. And that's my religion. And I don't need to tell anybody else about it if I don't want to. I just have to live my life based on a series of things that through trial and error, through collecting from here and there ideas and testing things out and feeling things out, I just need to come up with what I believe. What I believe. That's religion. And there's so much power and so much freedom in finally accepting that you don't need a group. You don't need a title in order to have a valid religion. And what happens when you enter this understanding, when you finally allow this for yourself, is that whatever religion, quote-unquote, you end up forming for yourself will not have an inbuilt urge to convince others. Because already, by entering that state, you already accepted that it doesn't matter if anyone else believes it. It doesn't matter how many people there are, because this is your beliefs, it is your individual religion no matter how many people you can recruit, will not prove or disprove its validity. It's, it's, it's a faith that is tested by yourself, by living your damn life, and by seeing if it makes sense in the long run. And adjusting it along the way, that's the other beauty of having your own individual religion. You could just change as what you learn changes. You don't have to stick to a book that was written thousands of years ago and not be able to modify it. The problem is not religion itself. The problem is organized religion. Just like we've touched on in the past, in other episodes, centralization of power, building up empires and hierarchies, and, and which create power struggles and politics and... All of this stuff is what makes something go sour. And so having an individual religion is almost the, the best way to ensure the purity of your beliefs. Because you will not be engaging in all of that stuff. You will just be living, damn it. 
Now, whether or not you agree with what I'm saying here, whether or not this is enticing you to try and form your idea of what your religion is, you still have, as I said earlier, a religion. It's your set of beliefs. So all you have to do is sit down, take a moment, and ask yourself, what do I believe? What do I believe? What have I seen to be true? And what makes sense to me? And maybe start collecting that. Just start, I don't know if you have to write it down or just give it some thought. But as you walk with this understanding of what you believe, as you move forward in life with an awareness of your beliefs, what makes sense to you, not what other people have told you, but what is tried and true, what makes sense, what feels right to your heart in life, what happens is you will start to always remember yourself, to always understand yourself. Uh, instead of uh, falling victim to other people's views, you will always have this foundation of what you really know to be true, what you really feel to be true. And that erases so much insecurity in life because you will be able to be faced with a completely disagreeing idea and not be threatened by it because you will know, you will have in your hand your set of beliefs that have been tested or feel right to you. And when an exotic idea comes your way, when a competing idea comes your way, instead of feeling you have to defend something rigid, what you'll be able to do is take that idea into your other hand and look at it and compare it to what you have. And hey, maybe test it out. Maybe say, you know what? For the next week, let's test this idea. And if that proves itself to have value, or even if just a percentage of that proves itself to have value, then guess what? You get to take that percentage and you get to put it into your other hand that holds your idea, your, your religion. Building an idea, building your personal view of reality, building your personal core beliefs is something that I think every human should be actively doing in life because there's so much personal power there. There's so much stability. There's so much strength, personal strength, that comes from that approach that is not offered in the group religion that seems to have abducted the meaning of religion these days. No, wrestle it out of their hands. That is not the only way. I hope I'm representing here the other way, which is the individual religion, which in my own personal life has proven itself to be more powerful than a group religion. How crazy is that? That one person can hold more power than an entire billions of people religion just in the mere act of owning their beliefs instead of following someone else's. And then life sort of becomes an adventure too if you really become invested in strengthening your religion, your views, you can go on a quest of exploring every other religious or belief system out there, looking for pieces that are strong enough, that stand your test enough to be added to your little ball of beliefs. And if you do that carefully, if you do that with an eye for real truth, you can really build something powerful such a valuable um, power source in your life. I wouldn't call it a weapon. I wouldn't call it a tool. It's just a core of power, of individual personal power that, of course, I've done myself. And I don't know if that comes through when I speak, but that's always there. The things I have collected in life as part of my own nameless religion that I've seen to be true. And I'm telling you from personal experience, there is power in that approach. And I would tell every human being that asks me for advice on this, I would definitely tell them, do that. Build your own damn religion. Figure it out for yourself. Feel no shame in borrowing from others. Because that's really what religion should be. We're all trying to figure out what's going on here. Nobody really knows, not science, not any organized religion, not atheists, 
not people that believe in nothing at all. Nobody really knows. It is completely up for grabs. So why shouldn't you in your own life, in your own sector of reality, try and piece together your part of the answer? If you ask me, that's helping everybody, especially if you do it in a way that is secure enough to not have to bash people over the head with it, to not have to recruit other believers to validate it. That is the real power of religion. And that is sacred. That is something so human and so important to this whole enterprise of the human race that it should not be thrown out because of a bunch of bad apples weaving ego into the thing and polluting it in the mainstream. So today's message, definitely empowering the self, empowering the individual lowly little speck that is you, that is your life, that is my life, that is the individual life that seems so small and so powerless, but is only that way when it surrenders its own power to the intimidating group. And look, forming your own personal religion, as I described, uh, doesn't mean you even have to leave a religion you're in right now. It's only flipping that switch in your mind that says, I can edit this. I don't need the approval of the group to change this belief system. I can add and remove whatever makes sense to me. And I don't even have to declare right now that I'm leaving this religion. It's just that simple switch of saying I'm allowed to believe what I believe. And then walking forward with that. And you'll notice that sooner or later you will be able to leave that religion. Because you'll realize, you know what, what I believe now, after all this time of changing and editing and learning, kind of doesn't match at all anymore with this particular religion. So I think I'm ready to declare that I'm no longer that. And then you'll be free. So, maybe I've convinced somebody out there to start this quest right now. Maybe someone's in a religion and thinking now, yeah, maybe I should open up a little bit and uh, explore. Or maybe you've been calling yourself an atheist, now realize that you have locked yourself into a belief system, and also realizing, yeah, maybe I should listen to what other religions are saying in case they have value. Or maybe you just never thought about religion at all and you didn't think you had a belief system, but I've got you now realizing, crap, I guess I do have a religion because I do believe some things. So... For all of these people who I may have uh, prodded into some new kind of motion today, let me offer you right now maybe the first uh, test, the first tool, the first piece to evaluate on this new journey of yours. And that is a look inside uh, my personal religion's Bible, let's say. Now, I'm not talking about a physical book, it's purely a concept. So imagine, if you will, a thick book, like any other Bible. And on the cover it says, The Book of Iism. <laughs> I know, it sounds ridiculous, but nobody's going to use it anyway. Let's just call it The Book of Iism. And you open this book, and on the first page it says, The First Rule of Iism. The universe is a massive unknown. Nobody understands existence, but we're all working on it. So you get out there and explore, live, and find out. And above all, value the truth, real truth, no matter how uncomfortable or scary it is. Find some way to digest it, and if you find it to be true, hold on. Keep it never forget. And then you turn the page, and the page is blank. You turn the page, the page is blank. The entire book is blank. That is the one and only thing that Iism holds above everything. And the rest is up to you. So, fellow human, good luck on your journey. Be free. Fly far. Travel the world and sing beautiful songs for all to hear keep building that truth 
and find yourself becoming more unshakable, stronger, more independent as you move forward. And hey, never hesitate to share. I mean, uh, I'm always happy to hear new concepts myself because I'm still working on my book. And I always will be. And I hope you always will be too. So that's it for today's episode. As always, you can visit higherideas.net to find a way to contact me through email. Add me on Facebook. Find me on YouTube and Twitter. It's all there at the bottom of the website, along with every other episode and other content that I make along the way. And I guess that's it for today. So until next time, fellow human, keep thinking.